Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is the semifinals! Or, well, actually, no, it's not quite because the. Such a rep. Anyway, semifinals of Zero K June 2v2 tournament. Gonna be watching Google Frog and Aquim versus Anarchid and the Sponge. Once they actually get the game started properly, because they actually need to restart the game. Because someone joined in the very last second. I think. Or no, no, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna. Have to, okay. So, once the game gets started properly, we'll get going. But anyway. So, this will be very interesting because Google Frog. I haven't seen Google Frog and Aquinum play together. I haven't seen Aquinum play at all. We saw Anarchy and the Sponge earlier. That was the first game we saw. And they did well, but of course, they were. They're experienced players, and I don't know how. Count and Tub and Bucky. Or Bucky, how experienced they were. They didn't do bad, but they also did. They were against. Players just outmatch them. Like, no shame in that. Wait. We're gonna be on desert plateaus. And waiting for the players to get their strategy going. So yeah, desert plateaus. We've seen this map before. First saw it in the last 2v2 tournament a couple months ago. And Google Frog and Aquinum starting on the west side of the map. Google Frog looks like he is planning on going. Okay, I guess Anik is going for air and Google Frog's going for. Not sure what. Sorry, Anik is going for air. The sponge is not sure what. Aquam going over to the northeast side. Google Frog going for Shieldbot Factory as far forward as he can. Being kind of aggressive with that. Aquam going for Cloakybot Factory a bit more defensively. Anik and the sponge not quite chosen their factory or their start point. Looks like the sponge is planning on starting mid. Anarchid seems to starting north from the looks of it. So we're gonna have the south side basically up for grabs. And another box of starlights. Because that's how you should start every game with a box of starlights. Breakfast of champions. So Anarchid starting out on the south side of the map. Actually gonna have. Whoa. The sponge is starting out far north. Anarchid starting out far south. Google Frog and Aquinum are kind of at an advantage at this point, I'd say. Like, really, not much more to be said about that. Google Frog and Aquinum, they can have an easy time defending each other. Whereas Anakin and the Sponge are on their own. Like, this is 1 and 1 v 2. More than 2 v 2. They're just, these two are way too far apart to actually help. Although Anakin going air does mean he can help out the Sponge, he can defend up. But Google Frog and Aquinum are just, they're adjacent. That counts for a lot. Especially when you are dealing with air and Ravens coming in and anti-air forces being used. Like if Google Frog gets hit by Ravens, Aquinum can send in some gremlins to tear them apart. And the sponge, however, is closest to both of them, so it looks like they're probably just going to hit the sponge hard. Once they realize what's going on, they're probably going to hit the sponge hard and avoid Ander Anderkid for the moment. Anarchid does scout them out, and now they know where the players are, and... Excuse me. <coughs> hmm. Sorry about that. Anyway, they know the players are north. Anarchid is well aware of everything. He has seen where the Google Frog and the Aquinum are, so he knows exactly when he needs to attack, and also that they're quite close to each other. Google Frog and Aquinum not quite aware that the sponge is on his own, and at the same time, though... Anarchid is playing air, so cross map support is a bit easier. Cross map support isn't as hard as it might look when you consider normally it's actually not that easy. So Anarchid is going for defender, sorry, Aquinum is going for some defenders, and Anarchid, he is going for ravens after a crane, getting a bit of economy, and then going to go for heavy raven, probably for calm snipe. Five ravens, that's easy and easily enough to, I think, snipe both commanders. No, he'll need to do one, five in each. Or four on each, actually. Though five wasn't a bad idea because of defenses that are inevitably coming. And of course, now that Google Frog and are aware of the air units, they can build anti air. Actually, Google Frog already has. Getting a couple vandals up. Actually, getting quite a lot. Getting infinite build vandals. Pushing as many as he can. And a few defenders as well. So he's. He is as prepared as he can be for comp snipes. And here come the Ravens. And also coming in are, well, Sponge is setting up a line, 
trying to take the north. The center is still very open. Google Frog taking as much as he can of that, or at least putting his forces in the way. Anarchid, because of the area that's Google Frog just going in front of his base. Going from his base and basically just when the Aryans come through, trying to stop them, although it looks like he's trying to stop them in advance. Just kill them inside of Anarchid's base. That's a little odd. Okay, never mind. He's moving his moving the vandals back. Not quick gonna go what he's going to go before. And if the sponge Oh, if the sponge leaves that open, Aquinum could take it. Just about left the north open for Aquinum to just harass completely, if not destroy. Well, Ultimately, though, not much is going to happen here. Aquinum is moving up towards the north. He's posturing along the north. Not much other than that. The sponge also posturing. Same as forces. Aquinum could probably... No, he can't quite move in directly. It would, it would be too hard. The commander's in the way. That wouldn't work. However, there are some glaze coming in from the sponge going around the southeast side to hit Google Frog's... Well... Got a defender, that's about it. Hitting Google Frog south, east, and one defender won't be enough. Two defenders will, but it won't be in time. And with the Swiss in the way, no, never mind. One defender, or two defenders, rather. Two defenders won't be enough. If the Swiss get in, because they're going to take missiles. No, nope, never mind. One defender, kill off one and a half glaives. And that's all that'll happen. However, the Ravens coming in to try to get rid of Aquinum's commander. Google Frog and Aquinum have a pretty strong position here, but... At this point, Anarchy and the Sponge now taking advantage of their separated locations. They're, they've consolidated together, they've met up, and they're taking the entire west half of the map for themselves. Google Frog and Aquinum losing a few forces here and there. Another one and a half glaive is going to die. Actually, all the glaives are going to die. Worth a shot, but still got rid of the southeast, and yeah, the south, south is kind of contested. At this point, the separation of Anakin and the Sponge is no longer biting them. It's actually now an advantage. They've managed to get through the risky early game and gotten to the point where it's going to pan out. Because at this point, as you can see, Goofrog and Anakin have a hard time maintaining map control over the south side of the map, while Anakin and the Sponge, it's going to be hard to wrest control from them. And now the Sponge coming in from the north side, getting rid of Akron's Glaze quite effectively. Not bad micro, though, even against the Defender. Even with the Defender around, I mean... Still losing a few more glaives. Killing off... An oh, not killing off the defender! That sucks. And a third defender on a mountain to finish them off. So these glaives can't do too much, unfortunately. The Rockos can do a fair amount, but yeah, Sponge lost a fair amount of glaives, but even then... Even then, they're still well ahead. I mean, Google Frog and Aquinum are just behind. By far. It was safe early game, but they didn't unfortunately manage to take advantage of that. If they had quickly rushed the Sponge and taken him out when Anakin and the Sponge were still separated, they could have won the game. Probably would have won the game, actually. But at this stage, that's not to be. The Wakunum still has his commander, as does Google Frog. The force is coming in just huge, and a tick as... Wow, nice tick. Missed the explosion, but did see the follow-up. And ultimately, get rid of those bandits. Getting rid of those bandits for free. Google Frog losing a lot for that. And he's going straight to Felon. Felon Convict Ball. As we saw with Cubay, which actually worked fairly well. It looks like Google Frog and Aquinum are going to focus on the Sponge pretty heavily. Try to just take control gradually from the east going west. Not going to go straight for the center. Although, mainly the main base has no static defenses, so the main base attack would be this. Okay, they don't know that, though. If they knew the main base had no defenses, they could go and attack it, and it would be very safe. But they do not know this. This is not a thing that they are aware of. They have not sent any scouting units to actually find out. However, the south side has been at least somewhat still contested. They're not letting the south side go without a fight. Unfortunately, that fight has been lost by Google Frog. I mean, it was an even trade, but Anarchy is just so much closer that it can't be harassed forever. Especially since Google Frog doesn't have a whole lot of harassment forces. Going for that Felon Ball. It's going to be tricky to keep going, but if he has... If he has a good position on the Felon Ball, he'll be fine. It's just that he can't take the south side. The south side is Anarchids now. So Google Frog, once again, rebuilding this Metal Extractor. Good job. He needs to do that. Building a few more Metal Extractors as well. As long as he keeps his Metal Extractors up, at least he's not going to be completely out of the game. 
Still, Anarchy and the Sponge are ahead economically. They're both overdriving pretty well. This is the overdrive. This is overdrive. Yeah, they're overdriving quite well. Admittedly, this is Desert Plateaus. This is already three metal per extractor. So every every extractor counts for a lot in this map. Now Google Frog has 19 metal. So Anakin the Sponge 27, 23 respectively. That's that's not working out special. Oh damn it! We need to change this super thing. Anyway, Anarchid is, well, he's dying in the south. He's spotted that again, burning it up. Some damage coming to the north, though. Aquanim is actually got a pretty good, he's got a good army. He's not doing too badly with that, but it's still, it's still tough for him to get it anywhere from there. Okay, now it's... Sorry, stream title, need to get that corrected. I keep forgetting to set that properly. Anyway, Anarchid is... Destroying that south part once again. Phoenix just burning out the metal extractor. I think it'll kill it. And Raven's coming in as well, but not doing too well. Unfortunately, Anarchid, he just have to contend with the fact that Google Frog has been building anti-air pretty consistently so far the entire game. And Aquanim going in with more glaives. Taking out, well, actually losing a lot. Not really taking out anything. Kind of an even trade for army, but the Wufrog and Aquinum are behind. I think they're behind. Militarily behind, economically. A little bit behind in map control. Actually, a fair bit behind in map control. Not much to really say. Goofrog looks like he was trying to break through with a felon, the felon ball earlier. That didn't really do anything. Not sure what they had planned. Maybe a fact switch? Missile silo? I don't know. There is a fact switch for Anarchy. He's gone for he's gone for Felon Ball of his own. I should notice that, of course, because we do see the Racketeers going out for Anarchy. The Sponge still staying with Floki Bot, though. He's actually starting to flood metal a bit, but yeah, getting another Caretaker to make sure he doesn't totally flood metal. Yeah, the Sponge is still going heavy Cloaky, getting a lot of Zeus on top of the Glaives. We'll be just pushing forward. And that defender actually has gone down in the mountain. Aquinum's commander goes down, and Aquinum's forces will soon follow. Right now, the sponge moving in to get rid of all these hammers and glaives. There's some defenders in the way, but those defenders have lost their payload. They're going to take a while to reload. But Lowe's is the only real defense that's in the way, and once that's down, I mean, there's a few more defenders here and there. Now goes another metal extractor, now goes a bunch of convicts. Wow, a bunch of convicts. Yeah, three convicts go down for that. And more defenders as well going down. Aquinum losing a decent chunk of his defenses. Not all of them, mind you, but a decent chunk thereof. Over in the center of the map, however, Google Frog counterattacking with a felon ball. I am can Google Frog doing a felon ball fight. I actually don't think it, I don't recall the last time I've seen that, if I've ever seen that. But yeah, felon ball fight coming in from them. At the same time though, we do have Convict going down to a couple ravens, just Picking off a lone convict as Anarchid takes more and more of the south side of the map. At this point, just looking at a pincer. I mean, the sponge is gradually taking the north. Anarchid is gradually taking the south. Once that's complete, assuming that gets complete, not much can be done. Google Frog and Aquinum are going to have to go on to game two. Wind counter, I thought I reset you. I apologize. It is quite early in the morning. Anyway. So. We do have, oh. And it's cloudy out today. I don't even know when the sun's there. But it doesn't matter, the sponge has, whether or not it is sunny outside does not matter. What matters is that the sponge has taken out the north side, he has gone through the north, he's getting rid of the, the solar collectors and the metal extractors. Not much that Aquinum could do about this. Trying to get a warrior to set up, but it could be overwhelmed by the glaze pretty easily actually. And the glaives come around. The important part is they come around, they get rid of the caretakers. Not that Aquinum even really needs those. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have enough metal to make use of them. The factory's not gonna go down though. The factory is still very much alive. But Aquinum loses his caretakers. He loses a decent chunk of his metal income. And Google Frog has to retreat as well as Anarchid is just pushing heavily from the center. The south actually hasn't been claimed. Anarchid not really pushing the south very hard, but he is pushing the center. 
And this stage also, the sponge is just setting up wind generators across the map for more and more, more and more energy, getting more and more overdrive. Although I'm not sure how well that's working. It looks like it's working okay. Not especially well right now, like 33%. Not terrible. 33% on an entire range of metal extractors is good. And I mean, admittedly, Anarchy and the Sponge have twice the economy of Google Frog. I know, three times the economy of Google Frog and Aquanim. That is saying something, but yeah, Google Frog and Aquanim. I mean, Aquanim's setting up Rockos for what looks like a last ditch attack. Losing a couple right off the bat to sharpshooters. But it looks like. Is he gonna go in? Is he gonna go straight in? He might go straight in. That'd be a bad idea. There's enough glaives to rip apart these fell these rogues. Sorry, Rockos. Rogues are shield bots. And coming in with Phoenixes as well, just to try to take out the Rockos, but unfortunately this Phoenix is gonna go. No, it's gonna drop his payload before it goes down. Taking out a decent, or at least damaging a decent chunk of the Rockos. Not taking them out quite yet, but it does at least soften them up so that the sponge can then go in with his forces and just clean them up, get rid of all of them. Okay, now Google Frog just needs to finish this out and, well, get finished off. Looks like Felon Thug Ball, classic Felon Thug Ball, though a bit of bandits, uh, sorry, convict support and a lot of racketeer support. Anarchid going in for the kill here. He's taking the south as well with a couple bandits and is pincering on that. The north has been retaken, but still, this is backed into a corner. Anarchy and the Sponge have map control, they have economy. Really not much more. There's really nothing to be said about this. There's just they're done. Google Frog and Aquanim are moving on to game two. And the Sponge and Anarchid. I'm not sure who paused, actually. Who did pause the game there? I don't know. No, I don't see it. I don't know who paused the game. But it doesn't matter. I mean, as long as he is... Well, like the Sponge and Anarchy are aware that they have an economic advantage. Not sure. Uh, what's gonna happen here? I don't know who paused, actually. I don't know why I don't know who paused. I thought I was supposed to know who paused. I'm supposed to display here who paused. Uh, well, whatever. Once it gets unpaused, then we'll get back to the game. But, as I was saying, yeah. Anakin and the Sponge have the economic advantage. Google Frog... I mean, how can I'm trying to go for... Pretty standard clicky bot setup, which isn't the best idea. Google Frog going for a felon ball, felon thug ball, which could work. I mean, maybe harassment around the side, like air harassment or something. I don't think there's a lot of anti. There's no anti air up really for Anarchy. Yes, I mean a couple swifts maybe. Although an air switch would be very risky at this stage, especially with the economy they have. I don't know if they would actually have the economy to make that work. If they do though, that would be very wonderful for them. And here come the felon ball attack. And looks like Google Frog is actually gonna have. Slight advantage? No, never mind. Google Frog's way behind for metal, for shield energy. Anarchid just out shield energy him. Or out shield energies him. And with the thug support, not much more can be said. Although, a nice roach. Not a bad roach placement, but even with that, nothing really died. A couple thugs died, that's about it. No felons died, that's really what matters. The thugs. Thugs are good for shield energy support, but yeah, it's the felons that make the difference. And another roach coming in, though. We gotta pay attention to this one. Because it might actually kill off the felons. The felons are pretty damaged. And Stardust goes down, that was there for defense. Another Phoenix attack along the north side. And the Sponge moving in with the Glaives and Sharp. Well, Sharp Shooter stopping it up, and the Glaives moving in for a big breach destroying rush. Although, or. Doesn't really matter, though. I mean, well, okay, the tick got rid of half the glaze, but yeah, like I said, that doesn't really matter. There are enough felons here. Another tick, however, gets rid of half the felon ball. Or at least stuns out half the felon ball. And the glaives are about to get back in the game. Sponges get glaives back to activity. And Aquanim about to lose everything. Google Frog still has his base, but unfortunately he is also about to lose everything from the north. A bit less risky, but Anarch <laughs> Anarchid burying his commander into the ground just to avoid getting killed. Just to be safe. But yeah, that... I'm not sure how well it's going to work, honestly. Because Aquanim has lost everything. Aquanim's ready to throw in the towel. 
mean, Aquanim's just about to lose, and Google Frog surrenders as well. Aquanim gets a bunch of stuff from Google Frog surrender, and there we go. Okay, now both of them have surrendered. That is game one. That is for Anarchid and the Sponge. I should always wait for that. Anarchid and the Sponge have one game one. We're moving on to game two once the map has been picked. Yeah, I don't know really sure what to say about that one. I mean, Anakin the Sponge, they had they had an economic advantage. That was really what it came down to. They just had economy. They had basically the fact that they were split at the start of the game meant that they had an easier time make, taking map control over the west side of the map. Once they met up, that's the thing. They had about three or four minutes where they were very vulnerable, especially the Sponge. But because he was right next to Google Frog and Aquanim Star locations, but. Once that was all done, then there really wasn't much to say about it. After that, once they met up, Google Frog and Aquanim were rather behind. I think Google Frog and Aquanim had gone for attacking the sponge directly, but they just didn't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, this this map definitely It's a risk that paid off. Looks like Not sure where this is gonna go, what map we're gonna be on. Anyway, once that's picked, I'll come back, so stay tuned for that. Welcome back, 0K fans! This is Chef 3 we're on Intersection. Anarchy and the Sponge versus Google Park and Aquanim, game two. What the? Just edited this! Anyway, sorry about that. The stupid win counter thing. I didn't have a chance to implement it actually in the game. I'm not sure how I'm going to go about that, or if I'm going to be the one to go about that, but... Yeah, it's on the stream, actually. It's just text on the stream, but it works nonetheless. Except for the fact that I can't easily edit it when I'm on a different scene, which is really annoying. Because I don't know what order the player is going to be in. Anyway, the game getting set up. Anarchid just choosing... Oh, well, he has a position. Intersection is a little bit tricky of a map to have a 2v2, but we did have a 2v2 on this last time as well. Google Frog going for Cloaky and Aquanim going for Air. Anarchy going for Air and the Sponge, I guess, is going to go for Light Vehicles. We'll see. Anarchy going for a Shield Switch after, and I think... I'm not sure if Sponge is going to go for Light Vehicles. I mean, Light Vehicles are common on this map. That's usually what players go for. But, we'll see. However, once the game gets started, we'll have this game get started. Eventually. Yeah, the sponge is thinking, okay, maybe light vehicles, but pick something. Because we're in the semifinals. And it's the first semifinals match, like I said, the second one's going to be Scuzzy and Black Dutchie, and then... Winners play winners, and losers play losers, and then I go to bed. So, Anarchy and the Sponge. On, get started. <sighs> sponge is going for Cloakies. All right. That's been decided. A sponge. So Anarchy gets air, Sponge gets cloakies. Google Frog going for one glaive into builders and the Aquanim going for Swiss. Anarchy going for Swiss. This is actually the first match I can think of that we've had today that has had air on both sides. Most of the time only one side goes air and the other side goes pure ground. Yeah, this is the first one that I can think of, but there might have been one more. That's air versus air. Oh there is, yeah, that's right, never mind. Banded planes, yeah. With Sanic. Yeah, that that first round match on Banded Plains, that had air and air. Like, Sigura went air and Sanic went air. Okay, so this is the second match today. Which, for everyone who says, no, you have to have an air player, clearly you don't. Especially given that Spider-Man and Spellman ended up losing 2-1 and had air every time. The only match they won on was the one where they started in a corner, where air actually works a lot better. But on the side opening maps, they lost with air start. Didn't do them a whole lot of favors. 
Actually, in the third game, it did them a decent amount of favors, but ultimately didn't work. However, Google Frog... Sorry, Aquanim should say. Aquanim needs to move back. He is... Taking some damage to the Swifts. He does have a Hawk Quiver to get to keep air control, but the Sponge coming with some Glaze below it. And Google Frog's own Glaze coming in. Google Frog, his Glaze Micro is going to be better than the Sponge's. I am sure of it. I'd be surprised if the Sponge does manage to outdo him in this, but yeah, Google Frog has really good Glaze Micro. So I wouldn't feel too bad. I wouldn't. If I was the Sponge, I wouldn't feel too bad if I wasn't able to out micro those Glaze. Still try those. Try at least once and then switch to Warriors if you can't. Yes, Google Frog. His Glaive Micro is quite good. He's also going to the southwest side of the map very quickly, expanding the southwest side of the map. And the northeast, so Google Frog aggress very aggressively expanding. Aquanim, no workers yet. Yeah, Google Frog expanding to the center, to the northeast, to the southeast. And Anarchid slowly going over to the northeast. And the Sponge slowly going over to the southeast. Google Frog just starting in the northeast and southeast and then meeting up in the middle. A risky play, I mean, we saw last game, that's basically what happened with start locations. It's a risky play, but it can work, and when it does, it's very powerful. Because you end up taking a lot of map control. And you take a lot of map control very quickly. However, it's something that you have to do carefully because you have to consolidate behind this. Like right now, Google Frog is a bit split. An attack to the center here could take it out. Well, in theory. Not not right now, though. There's too many forces. Or rather, there isn't enough of a force difference for that, make, for that to make a difference. The Sponge can't, however, easily attack the north. And neither player is really going to the center. I don't think Anarchy, Anarchy and the Sponge, I don't believe, are aware. No, they aren't. They aren't really aware of what's going on. And Google Frog, oops, Google Frog and Aquanim, quite a lot of map awareness. On well, the southwest, Aquanim just scouting out, making sure no Aryans get around. And now... Google Frog does barely see Anarchid's commander come in here. And I think Anarchid's gonna start getting suspicious because there are a bunch of glaives. Why are there a bunch of glaives over to the northeast unless Google Frog has already started to expand there? Because he has. And the sponge, I think he's gonna move in, although, I don't know, Anarchid's commander moving closer and closer to that defender. At the same time, though, it looks like I think Anarchid has spotted. Yes, Anarchid has spotted the north, the southwest expansion. And he's soon to spot the northeast one. Yes, he's, well, he's aware of the glaives here, probably aware of the expansion. Kind of obvious, although the sponge apparently not so much. The sponge going to the southwest to take that out. And to take out Google Frog's commander, who is at risk right now, has no support units behind. There are two Rockos coming in behind, and that's it. Otherwise, nothing. And bear in mind, Google Frog and Aquanim are behind by one in games. Although Google Frog digging himself into a hole. Trying to basically avoid death. Though, ultimately doesn't die there. The sponge doesn't manage to deal any damage to it. But still able to get rid of the southwest expansion. This is going to go down pretty quickly. And the northeast expansion actually is no expansion. It's just a defender line and glaive line. No expansions yet. So Google Frog and Aquanim aren't actually ahead of our economy yet. Although the southwest actually is... That is an expansion that has been taken... The sponge not going that far down, though. Not exploring all the way to see exactly what's built up. Which is odd, because that's where Anakid pointed out that there is actually something going on. And it looks like Anarchid trying to set up over here in the northeast as well. Google Frog. Is he going to build... He's going to get himself out of the hole at some point? Yes, he is. He's getting himself out of the hole. Figuring he's safe. And he is... He's right. Yeah, he's not really got much that's actually threatening him at the moment. So he continue to build up. Mostly Rockos, or entirely Rockos at this stage. He has a few Glaives from before. A lot of Rockos coming in for the Sponge, which will help out against the Defenders, and actually will be a threat to the Commander, but unfortunately for the Sponge, too many Glaives to deal with. These Rockos are going to go down. And the Google Frog starts to get his Commanders built up. Now, oh yeah, Ticks. That's a good thing to build. And it looks like that is what the Sponge is going for. He's getting a couple Ticks. None built so far from the looks of it. We'll see, though. Nope. No ticks built so far. That's the first one. Put in the right spot, though. It'll turn the game around. I mean, Google Frog is getting some reclaim for economy, and he actually has a slight economic advantage. No. Pretty large economic advantage, actually. He has one metal extractor here. He has a metal extractor here. He has... Actually, beyond that, not much ahead. 
No, they're about even for economy. Never mind. Although, Anarchid... Ooh, his commander's taking a lot of damage. That'd be half his metal if he lost it. Doesn't want to lose that. That mentioned before, that is a big thing. You do not want to lose your commander until you get about 20, 25 metal, at which point it's not as big of a drop. But before that point, my goodness, that is a huge loss if you lose your commander. Especially in a team game, because in a team game, you have twice as much metal invested in commanders, or in the commander income. And, of course, you're splitting the metal extractors that exist. Because remember, this is a 1v1 map being used for 2v2 right now. So in 1v1, it works out okay. You'd have 25 metal by now. But in 2v2, each player only has 12. Although, part of that is, like, each player has 8 on the map and 4 in commanders. Still, kind of tough to really take a lot of map control. It looks like Google Frog and Aquaman actually have the map control. Google Frog's Gambit... No, not Gambit. Gamble. Not like Gambit. He didn't sacrifice anything. His Gamble's paying off. He is getting the map control as a result. And, at this point, just pincering out. Though Anarchid trying to harass as best he can. We'll be able to get rid of this. North the Southwest Metal Extractor will go down. Or no, it won't! Anarchid has to escape. He probably could have gotten another shot in, though. But yeah, he escapes... Avoids all of Aquanim Swifts, gets back to base. But still, a lot is going down. Wait, did that, that doesn't look like a commander death. A lot of defenders down. Where is this commander? Did, did this commander die? I I think I would have noticed. No, his commander is very much alive. His commander has retreated. But yeah, lost a lot of defenders that were up front. And it looks like Anarchy is going to go in for... Oh, there's music. Anakin's gonna go for another kill. Or, is he gonna kill the fact? Is he gonna kill the metal extractor? I don't know. He should try. Oh, gonna go for the conjurer first. Go for another pass on that. Get okay. Got rid of the conjurer. Getting some damage on that swift and not that hawk. But ultimately, Google Frog just has the map control. He has the economy. Anakin, the sponge, trying to make up for it possibly with overdrive, but it's tough. Really tough to work with. Sharpshooter coming up for the sponge. That is really risky. If he manages to get rid of the commander, it'll be worth it. But getting in a position to do that with all these defenders around and all the rockers around, if anything spots that sharpshooter, it's dead. Usually the case, yeah, but especially here. However, Raven does go down from Aquanim, so Aquanim is having a bit of a hard time at least maintaining his air force, or at least the anti ground air force. But Google Frog moving in. Gonna go over the Rockos. I think he could win at this point. I think he could push in. He's not going to. He's gonna be. Con He's gonna just take it slow. I mean, he does have these glaives to contend with, but the thing is, his own glaives are there, and he should be able to push in. Tear apart Anarchist Commander. Sponge Command is also up front, and well, not a bad attack by the Sponge. Got rid of Defender. Pushed back slightly, but Google Frog and Icon are just slowly creeping forward, slowly but surely, just getting in there. And ultimately taking this match, or we'll soon ultimately take the match, if Anarchid and the Sponge don't change something up. If they manage to break out, then they'll be fine, but yeah, they've been contained for a while. Felon coming in, no ball, just the Felon alone for Anarchid. And a Sharpshooter... Sharpshooter is up for Gulrog as well as for the Sponge. Just got built for the Sponge. Has been around for a while for Google Frog. Google Frog going for Glaives and Glaives and Conjurers. That's all he's going for. Not a bad tick, but still, it's just really there's not much the Sponge can do other than change up entirely. They have to kind of change the strategy entirely. Although it looks like they are just trying to break out. And Gremlins are in place to get rid of the air. Sharpshooters are in place to try to push back here. I mean, it's kind of a war of attrition, but I think that it really is the question of Google Frog has map control. And Aquanim is really benefiting from that. And the Sponge and Anarchid can't do much. I mean, they're pushing out as best they can. And admittedly, the Sponge is doing a decent job keeping his units alive. But this map, except for the corner here that the Sponge and Anarchid started on, pretty much belongs to Google Frog and, Aner and Aquanim. Mostly to Google Frog. Yeah, Google Frog and Aquanim just have this. But look, Anarchid in the north, he is trying to break out, moving with a thug felon ball, a small thug felon ball. But still moving out with that, trying to do with that what he couldn't do with the air units. At the same time, Google Frog, nice attacking with these glaives. They are, however, going to die to the sponges. Going uphill, right into the sponges' glaives. The sponge 
loses maybe one glaive, maybe. Yeah, he lost one glaive for Google, for five of Google Frog's glaives. You gotta be careful about this. They aren't that far ahead. Like, Google Frog and the Sponge, sorry, Google Frog and Aquanim aren't that far ahead. Google Frog and the Sponge do have the largest armies. But yeah, Google Frog's not that far ahead. Mainly it's the economy here, but that's actually not that hard to break. And if the Sponge Nana could break out, it could turn the game around and be a 2-0 win. And Swift's getting killed by the Felon, but that is just wasting shields so the Raven can take care of it. So admittedly one of the Ravens does go down, the other one, the other one's full health. Quite a loss there for just one Felon. And Anarchist Commander, fully healthy and taking the northeast corner. It looks like the Sponge and Anarchist are actually having a bit of a chance here. I should probably turn off the defense ranges. It's actually hard to really get an idea of map control when the defense ranges are on, because defense ranges make players that build a lot of defenses seem much better equipped than they actually are. Because right now, the Sponge has a lot of glaze. He has a lot of units overall, a lot of gremlins too. He, he's been pushing Google Frog away quite effectively, and Anarchy with his Riot Commander doing a good job. The Google Frog Sharpshooter needs to be careful about this. This Sharpshooter here is going to go for... I was trying to go, going to try to go for a shot on Anarchy's Commander, but I don't think it has the range. No, it does have the range. What the heck? That's weird. It's not actually attacking it. Yeah, the Sharpshooter, Anarchy not aware of it. But it is... There we go. Anarchid now aware of it. He's going to lose his commander to it if he's not... Oh, he's going to lose the commander to it. Anyway, that, the Raven coming in to finish off the commander. Ooh, not quite. That is a battle come after all, but the sharpshooter will finish it off. And... Down it goes. Down it goes. Anarchid loses his commander. Eight metal per second, so still behind for metal. Still ahead for army, though. I mean, the sponge has done a really good job keeping his units alive. I guess his Glaive Micro isn't that much worse than... is pretty much the same as Google Frog's. Oh, he is still having to deal with a lot of harassment coming in, though. But yeah, larger Felon Ball for Anarchy. He's managed to keep that alive mostly, and the Felon died, but the Thugs were okay. And Roach for Aquanim, I think. I mean, Google... no, wait. Not Aquanim, that must have been Roach for Anarchy. Didn't help that much, but what will help is the Felon Ball. Felon Ball moving in very strongly. There is a Sharpshooter, which is the hard counter, pretty much. But if it gets spotted, it's dead. And honestly, I don't know how much it matters, because the Sharpshooter, while it is going to get a clear shot in there on the Felon, that Felon gets rid of Aquanim's commander. So Aquanim's lost his commander. That's a third of his economy down. Or a third of his metal, at least. Google Ball loses his commander. Then that will be quite the turnaround. However... The Sponge needs to be careful here. He is taking a fair amount of losses of his glaives to Google Frogs. If Anarchid comes in here to help out, gets rid of the glaives with the Felon Ball, that'd be a very useful move. Google Frog has a couple sides on top of that game. Actually, how many sides does he have? He has five sides, one in production, but the other four are out already. They are going to be spot. Oh, gotta be careful about that. Just about got spotted by the glaives. A little bit dangerous, but he might be able to move in. I think he's going to go straight for the Felon, try to take that out directly, but he might go even further back, try to take out the factories directly, and cut this force off at its source, because at this point, Anarchy and the Sponge are breaking out. That defenders advantage for a while, and now they are breaking out. We're going to possibly see another comeback. Not sure, though. It's not necessarily going to be the case, because, well, honestly, the game is still going on. Like, there's, It's still pretty even. Anakin and the Sponge are breaking out, but Google Frog and Aquam are not losing by any stretch. They're just not as winning. And sides have been revealed. Getting rid of the sharpshooter for the sponge. Losing one of them in the process, but yeah, I got rid of the sharpshooter. Revealed the existence of the sides, but not necessarily where they are. And hinted at their position, but nice double back there by Google Frog. Make sure that they can't Anakin and the Sponge can't guess where the sides are going. Doesn't really matter though, I don't think they care, honestly. Now the Thunderbird they're gonna care about, that splits the thug ball. Actually gets rid of all but one thug. At least gets them out of commission for a little while. And stunning out a few more. So all the thugs are either EMP'd or disarmed. And the felon is dead. But more felons are, of course, forthcoming. Or, no, they're not. What? Oh, pure bandit. Thugs are just on their own now. No felons alongside them. Just thug. And Google Frog, able to repair himself well enough, able to keep the center. Loses the southwest corner, though. I forgot to point that out. Southwest corner did go down during the attack. The northeast corner has been reclaimed. So Google Frog has managed to 
get that back. But the Southwest has been lost. Anarchid hasn't rebuilt there, though, and the Sponge is actually in a decent economic position. Looks like Anarchid might be sending out some forces. Maybe rebuild there, but definitely... Well, trying to deal with these Glaives. The Felon would be wonderful for dealing with the Glaives. Thugs, not so much. Bandits will be okay, and Scythe spotted before it managed to deal any meaningful damage. Hits the Solar Collector and closes it up, but not that big of a deal, and more Scythes about to be detected. Or maybe not. No, the Scythes don't get detected! They're gonna hit the radar first, though, and that's... that's gonna reveal them. And from there, they actually will be able to deal a lot of damage. Getting rid of wind generators left and right! Anakin losing all of his power infrastructure, can't really do much about this! Losing the airplane plant, too. Bandit gonna try to save it, but it's not gonna be in time. The airplane plant going down, and Anarchid loses his planes. Or at least plane production. Not that he's really cared about that so much recently. He has been focusing more on shields, so plane production, while a problem to lose, not the biggest deal, but still, that's exactly what Google Frog should have done, and he did it. And a roach at the center of the map just to try to take care of some of the glaze coming through. Actually, try to take care of some of the Morocco's coming through. So at this point, a bit of a stalemate, but Anarchy and the Sponge are now slightly behind. A lot of thugs. Anarchy's starting to build up in the southwest corner of the map. But Anarchy can't easily, solidly hold any part of the map. But like I said, he switched, to, he switched to shields a while ago. So losing air, while a bit of a problem, isn't that big of a deal. And in fact, Aquanim, has he fact swapped yet? No, Aquanim is not fact swapped. But Aquanim hasn't really done anything recently. What is Aquanim doing? Is that guy even in the game anymore? I don't see him doing anything. Strange. Anyway, doesn't matter. The Google Frog does have a sharpshooter. A couple of sharpshooters, in fact. And a tick. It's going to be difficult to attack from the north side, although basically it's going to be impossible for Anakin to secure this southwest side. Not the north side. Attack from the south side. It's going to be hard for Anakin to secure the south side of the map. Southeast, southwest corner of the map because the sharpshooters just tear it apart. Not to mention the Thunderbird. Now, unfortunately, I mean, there is a felon coming in, and there's four sides coming in as well. Looks like they're going to end up going around and hitting the sharpshooters directly. However, that's still, that's still a good kill. No, in fact, they're going through the Roccos. What? I was going to get rid of a few Roccos, we lose the scythe in the process. That's not really worth it. Dancing through a field of rockets, hitting more Roccos. Well, at least that's well, getting some kills, at least. That's good, but not the best use of size, I would say. Sharpshooters would have been a better option, or going back and basically getting revenge by killing Google Frog's Clickabot factory. I think this was possibly a mistake, but I don't know, Sponge is paying attention. Got rid of a few Roccos and held them back. Doesn't look like he built up in the process, though. Admittedly, this is giving Anarchid some breathing room to build up more and more Felon Ball. And is that... Ooh, Roach goes out, kills a couple Glaives, but not quite as much as I'm sure that Anarchid would have liked. That Roche did not do the job it, meant, it was meant to do as much as it wanted to. Google Frog does have this ramp taken, and he's gotten the southwest corner once again. He may not have taken it for himself, but he's certainly denying it for Anarchid or the Sponge. And that is kind of been good enough at this stage. I mean, Google Frog is way ahead army-wise. He's ahead economically. And while Anarchid is doing a great job trying to keep up, it's not working out especially well, unfortunately. I mean, valiant effort. Dragged the gamma to 20 minutes, and they're not necessarily lost. But now a missile silo being built up, getting some infernos up, and I think this is going to end it. Oh, wait. Yeah, first inferno's already gone off. What am I saying? First one's already hit. Second one's going to hit shortly. Caretaker's going down. All the caretakers gone down. Massively slowing down Anarchy and the Sponge's production. And as well as Thunderbird coming in. Zeus is trying to deal with this. Glaive's going to try to deal with the Zeus instead, and Glaive's for the Sponge behind there for support. But even that's a lot of Glaive's that Google Frog has. Well, how, many Glaive, how many Glaive's does Google Frog have? I can second anyone's unit somewhere. Well, there's 34 Glaive's in the map total, but it looks like about 20 of them are Google Frogs. Another Thunderbird shot. Oh, I see. Aquanim is now building more units. Thunderbirds and Phoenixes, exactly what he needs. Good choices there. However, the missile silo is still very much up, and another Inferno goes down. Doesn't destroy any of the factories, but it does deny the unit production, pretty much. Very damaging. Gets rid of 
Metal Extractor and a couple Solar Collectors too. That, I think, is going to seal it. If it hasn't been already, that's probably going to seal it. Still, Anarchy and the Sponge not yet ready to give up. They do, however, have like, they've got a bunch of gremlins. They have got a bunch of scythes. That's a lot of scythes. That's seven scythes. Google Frog only went for scythes once. It looks like the sponge going for another round of scythes. I mean, if he hits the center of the base, if he hits the main base, that could turn things around. I just don't know if he's going to manage to do that. That's the hard part. But if he does... Well, there's a lot of thugs that are not actually doing anything. There we go. They really were just hitting each other. Or trying to avoid hitting each other. That was the problem. But yeah, the size unfortunately going to run through all these forces of Google Frog, and they're going to die again. The sponge, no, hit the factory! Hit the factory! Kill this main base. The main base could be destroyed by seven sides. Pretty easily could be destroyed by seven sides. Now this tick, the tick goes here is actually gone. Sides have retreated. One of them did die. And another set of glaives coming in the back. Google Frog going to rip apart everything that Anarchy and the Sponge have built up in their main base. The Sponge, like I said, if he were to go for the main base, he might be able to turn this... Not even turn this around. He might have been able to turn this around. But yeah, this is one and one. Moving on to game three. Or... Maybe not. Anarchy's not ready to give up. All right. Another Inferno Missile comes down, and... Wow, there's a lot of Gremlins. All the Gremlins go down to the Inferno Missile. The entire main base... Oh, the factories... Actually, the Glaives didn't kill the factories yet. Looks like the sides are moving in. The Thunderbird... No, what are the sides doing? Just hit the main base! I don't know why I'm getting so frustrated by that, but it's like... When you have sides, like, that's the point of sides, is to hit really important targets. Not frontline stuff. Backline stuff. Get back. Ooh, super powerful raid. Just rip apart everything. They have no defenses. Or even just scout out what defenses they have and then destroy them. Just the sponge is... I don't know. Is he giving up? Is he gone? Like, really? What? What are you waiting for? Just act. Move. Do something. Okay, there we go. Moving his size. I guess he must have been just chatting. Busy typing. But yeah, these sides... I guess they're going for the missile silo. Admittedly, that's a that's a big target, so I'll give him that. It's not going to be the big target, though, but it is a big target, so that's something. It's not, however, an undefended target. Still think main base was a better idea. Okay, this is game. We are on to game three. Or we will be once Anarchy decides to surrender. Yeah, we are on to game three. Yeah, the size needed to be in the main base. Main base size. Google Frog did that right. The sponge, not so much. But we are on to game three, so there's still a chance. The sponge still has a chance to redeem himself from the scythe usage. Or just... I mean, basically, Anarchy and the sponge still have a chance to win. So, we'll choose the map, and... Well, Anarchy and the sponge will choose the map. And then we'll be back with that once that game happens, so stay tuned. Hey, welcome back, Circuit okay fans. We're on to game three of Aquanum versus, I mean, Aquanum Google Frog versus Anarchid and the Sponge. It's going to be, well, it's going to be on. Wait, what am I doing? Comic Catcher Read. Oh, bloody hell! Seriously, it's going to be a Comic Catcher Redux, I think. Not sure. Did they choose that, or is it just that was automatically what it jumped to? I think it's the automatic switch. So it looks like Anarchy and the Sponge do want that map. Uh, I was hoping to have a little bit of a nap when this is done. Anyway. Might still be able to. So here comes the map. Match. And come catch a redux. Oh yeah, Floris, like I said, Floris is at a meeting, so I... Wait, what am I doing? Shit. I don't want to do it all. Sorry, I'm talking about my, my UI. I thought I was casting replay, apparently. Anyway, in-game. So, we have Anakin and Sponge over to the north, Google Frog and Aquanum over to the south, Probably going to be heavy tank, light vehicle for both, but yeah, my anarchist's already going for heavy tank. Nothing really showing over to the south, though. 
Google Frog and Aquanim are possibly setting up something? I don't know. Let's see, they aren't really planning much. Let's see. I'm guessing the sponge is planning on going for light vehicles. Or hovers. Huh. So the sponge is thinking hover. Google Frog. Anyway. Google Frog is thinking hover. And thank you, Frog. Uh, I apologize. I'm getting distracted here. There we go. So with okay, Google Frog, what is he going for? Aquanim actually is going for hover. Sponge has not chosen yet. He hasn't even decided a starting location. Google Frog. Oh wow, Google Frog and Aquanim both going for hover. What? I I don't. Oh, I see. They're going for hover because they're trying to get flails. Full-on flail in case of air start. So as long as the sponge does not go air, I think that Anakin and the sponge are going to have an advantage to start out with. We'll see if that's the case, but I don't know. Right, the game is going to start as soon as the sponge lays down his start point. Once they're done talking strategy. Yeah, Sponge going light vehicles. And a good plan to transition to air, but we'll see what happens when they see hovers. And the game will now begin. Aquanim and Google Frog both going for hovers, both going for... Oh, scrubbers first off. Not quite going for flails yet. Going for heavy scrubber. Sponge is going for light vehicles over the west side. So Google Frog and Aquanim going to the centers again, and our Anakin and the Sponge are... More separated start. As we saw last game, it really comes down to whether or not the team that's closer together rushes the team that's further apart. But Desert Plateaus is different. Desert, Desert Plateaus was it was a square map. So there was a shorter rush distance for the two players that are nearby. On Comic Catcher Redux, that doesn't really make a difference, actually. It really doesn't in terms of map control. I mean, Aquanim... Aquanim and Google Frog with the Scrubbers are doing a decent job. I mean, the Sponge can't really do much with the darts. However, Panthers can do quite a lot. So, Anarcha getting that up and getting more metal extractors. And, of course, this map we're going to see probably 30, 40 metal for each player within the next 10 minutes. Kodachi coming in early on. Well, the Scrubbers coming to the main base and Anarchid Anarchid and the Sponge are well aware that, yeah, both hovers. Pointing out, double hover factory. I don't think I've ever seen a double factory play ever. I'm not kidding. This is the first time I've ever seen a team with two players. Well, obviously I only cast two of you. Oh, actually, I did cast one 3v3. But I've only, I've never seen players in a team all use the same factory. Ever. This is a first. Gotta say. First time for this. I've not seen this. And hovers on top of that. So, we do have a lot of scrubbers coming in, and scrubbers do well in large groups, so I can see why hovers, I mean, flails are more the point, but I can see why hovers could be quite useful as a double factory choice. Bit of a risk though, scrubbers do have high alpha but low reload time, which means that Scorchers actually would probably do pretty well, and the Panthers of course are Panthers. Unfortunately, that does require some coordination unless Akronim donates to Google Frog, which he's not going to. He is going to help out the attack, attack him flame from the south while attacking from the north. Anarchid and Aquanim. Okay, this is where this is what they should have done the first game, was just gang up on one player because they're separated. Unfortunately, like I said, CCR does not make this quite as useful as Desert Plateaus would have been, and that obviously doesn't quite work out as well as it would have otherwise. The Sponge able to defend against this, and Google Frog and Aquanim not able to deal much more damage than a couple of metal extractors, though that is still something. But yeah, not the biggest deal. That will not kill it. Oh, sorry, this is called Daggers now, of course. Thank you for changing the name. Daggers, right. Wonderful, that'll be very useful when scalpels come up. And Kodachi buying here, that did some damage, but Dagger coming down to take it out. So Daggers for everyone. Oh, actually, apparently Daggers are good versus Panthers, according to Lowry. Which I could see, it's really a matter of alpha, but at the same time, it's a matter of numbers. 
and also kind of positioning. I think with enough Panthers, actually no, with enough, with too many Panthers, they'd stun themselves out. So yeah, I can actually see how daggers would work, because daggers do scale much better in numbers than Panthers do. And they have the high alpha, well actually both Panthers and daggers have very high alpha. And we have more scrubbers coming for Google Frog. Switch over to scalpels, sorry, daggers. More, some scalpels along with the daggers for Aquanim. Google Frog attacking once again. Anarchid's commander is not going to let that happen trivially. But still, they did manage to keep him behind. So, nice harassment early on. Google, the sponge coming with half a dozen scrubbers along the west side of the map. At the center now. Going to try to go back here, get rid of all these medley shards at the factory. Actually, six scrubbers against this? This is going to be well, well destroyed by those scrubbers. I don't see any defenses nearby. I mean, there's obviously the scrubbers, sorry, the daggers are here. Scorchers is what I'm going to say, not scrubbers. These are scorchers, these are daggers, and these are scalpels. Got rid of one S name. I don't know why S, I don't know what, what is the letter S, having names start with letter S, but for some reason it always confuses me. Doesn't matter though, scalpels, ooh, nice splash in that scalpel damage. And scr the Scorchers coming in and doing it. nothing. Donating metal. Aquanim and Google Frog appreciate your donation, Sponge. I'm sure you realize this. I'm sure you're rather kicking yourself because of that. But yeah, that southwest side is totally vulnerable, but that point there, not so much. Anyway, Google Frog getting more daggers up, and at this point. Army's about even, actually. Army's about even, economy's about even. Google Frog, actually, no, Aquanim is ahead in economy thanks to the Reclaim. But, yeah, Reclaim is really the difference maker right now. In terms of static economy, they're even, but in terms of Reclaim, no. Aquanim has good Reclaim choices. Google Frog as well, actually. Most of his own stuff, but still, he has Reclaim. So, the Sponge is still building up. He's still going for a lot of sc Scorchers. Like I said, half a dozen scorchers would have been fine against going along here. It's more what I meant is this section here, half a dozen scorchers would have done a good job. This area here, no, they wouldn't have. They didn't do anything. And now there's a wall of solar collectors. The scrubbers will never do anything on that side of the map without that wall being knocked down first. Or going around the back here. That that could work too. Though that won't work for very long. And a fusion plant coming up very quickly for the heck? Not sure what happened there. Okay. Bizarre. Anyway, back now technical problem has been resolved. And thankfully that was it's one and one, so I don't have to worry about rejigging the wind count. The Google Frog coming along the east side, getting hit by some Panthers, but Ooh, actually the scrubbers were sun on fire. Sorry, daggers were sun on fire. Is that going to do anything? I think it won't. Nope. They survive. 20% health, but they survive. Very soft, though. And like as you can see, Google Frog and Aquanim are taking map control quite well. Anarchy and the Sponge are actually... No, the map's split, it's split pretty evenly. Now the player really has map control advantage. The Sponge is going to try to raid out once again with these Scrubbers. I mean, no, Scorchers. Daggers in for Google Frog, even when they aren't... How the S name still screws me up. Daggers for Google Frog are coming in and are going to go down. Like I said, Scorchers do have an advantage against Daggers just due to the fact that they are really high fire rate. As long as the Scorchers don't die to the first volley from the Daggers, the Daggers are going to lose. And Vendor coming in here with... Oh, Mace is on top of that. Ooh, actually, it's not going to be that useful. The Mace will push away the Scorchers. And ultimately, there's too many Daggers that will stop the Scorcher from doing much, although the Scorchers did a lot against the Daggers there. Just double check the cost... Actually, no, 85 for daggers. Yeah, I guess daggers are more cost-effective than scorchers. Scorchers are 130. So you want to kill, like, one and a half times as many daggers as you had scorchers. And, yeah, right now, Catabor, I think it's Rymark, pointing out that Google Frog likely to snowball. I disagree. I really disagree. We're getting some good rating coming in from Anakin and the Sponge. They are pushing back here. Unless this is the last game. Might have been the last game. What time is it now? No, that was this game. That's this game. He's talking about this game. I Yeah, I disagree. I think there's enough raiding going on from Anarchid that the Sponge... Okay, the Sponge isn't doing a whole lot. He's doing some decent stuff to keep the army size down. And Anarchid's doing some good job... Doing a good job keeping the economy down. Although, unfortunately, 
destroying one of his own panthers in the process, but yeah. Getting rid of Google Frog's economy pretty effectively. Although, it's a flank, but it's not quite getting the center down. And also, this could actually needs to run away. Needs to run away, or burn up the quill. Actually, hit the quill would be the better idea. We're getting into Mason territory and Google Frog. Actually, all players are getting a lot of caretakers or builders. And Google Frog has gone for an air switch. Getting a few Ravens. Got two so far. Oh, no, never mind. Not two. Ah, he has two. Anarchid has four. Anarchid went for an air switch earlier, as he mentioned he would do. And we're now getting dumb in agencies for the sponge. He's either getting desperate or just cheeky. Although, if he gets the mace, that would be very effective. That would be useful if he gets the mace. Not so useful if he gets daggers. Still kind of handy, but not so useful. And Anarchy coming in with his Ravens, kind of scouting out, seeing what to attack. Getting rid of some radar, getting rid of some force. Oh, get some quills, defenders, breaking up the front lines. So yeah, this isn't really a snowball game. I think. Honestly, Anarchy and the Sponge have an economic advantage. Actually, ten metal each. But yeah, they got twenty metal on Google Frog and Aquinum. And the Sponge, he primarily through just sheer force of solar collectors. I guess the thing is just reclaim, or not reclaim, it's overdrive that's really doing it for them. Well, Google Frog and Aquan do not have a really good connected grid. A well connected grid. The Sponge has everything, or as much as he can connect. He's connecting all he can. No pylons though, but he's connecting as much as he can with power structures. He probably should build a few pylons though, but yeah. Getting it all set up and more Ravens coming in on the center of the map. Daggers are taking a decent amount of damage. Some Phoenixes would be the best option, but at this point it's a little late for that. So this is a bit of a stalemate right now. However, the west side of the map, we do have the Sponge coming in. And the Sponge is coming in with a lot of units here. Getting a Scalpel. That was a good call. That was a good catch. Got a Scalpel. Killed a Scalpel. Taking a Metal Extractor as well. Not sure. Is that... No, that's not from the Dominatrix. He just built a Metal Extractor there. And a nice Scorcher shot. Although, unfortunately, too many Scalpels here to deal with. The Scorcher is not going to be able to get through. I think Raptors would have the best chance, although he's going pure dummy. While we have Swifts and Reapers coming in for Anarchid. Now, Anarchid with 70 metal. He can easily push out Reapers. He can push out pretty much everything he has right now. Only has one character on the... Okay, why only one character on the Heavy Tank Factory? In fact, Anarchid is starting to flood metal. Needs more caretakers on factories. Not bad use of defenses, but needs more caretakers on factories. That is a big thing. He needs that. However... Anarchid and Google Frog fighting for air control. Google Frog swiftly takes it with his Swifts. And Aquanim reestablishes ground control near the base. So that harassment has been destroyed. But yeah, the Sponge and Anarchid are slowly but surely grinding away. Just literally like grinding away. The Reapers trying to do what it can against these scalpels, but not much. I need some decent skirmish. Oh, yeah, the skirmish unit is like. He's the only one that managed to last through a volley. Oh, this air isn't bad choice either. Taking Google Frog's Air Force. Which isn't... Actually, surprisingly, how's that working? How is the Domination he's not getting killed in the process? Like, well, now it's going back to Anarchist's Air Pad. Because those need to re... They need to rearm, and that's the only air, allied air pad to rearm at. Yeah, those Domination are taking air units. However, nice shot by An oh, wow, very nice assault by Aquanim. Aquanim coming in here, getting rid of the Sponge's commander. Or very likely to do so. Oh, missed the commander there. So the Sponge barely escapes with his commander. Still, those scalpels taking the west side and forcing the Sponge back. And I think Google Frog and Aquanim might have a chance of breaking through here. The problem is that Anarchy and the Sponge are not using their economic advantage. They are not converting it into a production advantage. Well, actually, no, the Sponge is. Ow. Anarchid, not so much. Anarchid needs to do that as well. The Sponge definitely is, though. The Sponge has got that solid. And. Not a. Well, decent amount of anti air. You got some. Or no, that's not anti air. That's the Swiss attacking the ground. But. Yeah, Google Frog. Google Frog has a solid air force right now. Not much that Sponge can do with his captured units. Or that Anarchid can do in general. And Anarchid's trying, but there's not much he can really do. And now map control has really swung in favor of Aquanim and Google Frog, thanks to that assault over here in the west side of the map, which is continuing. Aquanim 
Going along once again, getting more and more of those Scorchers gone. And Scalpels just work like raiders. I mean, if the Scorchers were in lines more, I think I think the Sponge is going for line moves somewhat, but I don't know if he really is. I think he might be dot moving. He is line moving to an extent, I know, throughout the game, but the Scorchers are becoming way too clumped up. The Scalpels are able to kill them as a result. And Reaver's coming in. One of the Reavers is about to go down immediately. Oh, no, not quite. Got spread, the fire got spread too much, and the Reapers are all alive. Managing to kill off a few scalpels. And the Glaives coming in as distraction forces. Getting rid of what they can. But still not much. Okay, well, one scalpel goes down to the Glaives. That wasn't bad. The Reaper's able to get back out of there and repair. So no Reapers lost for Anarchid. And he's just slowly building up his forces. But Aquanim, Aquanim and Google... Well, okay, the Sponge has decent military advantage. Aquanim is a massive military advantage thanks to well, this entire force of scalpels, really. That's a quarter of it right there. Actually, oh, he has his own Reaper as well. He's gone for heavy tanks. I missed that. Yeah, he went for heavy tank switch. And he's going to tear apart. Wow, okay, a lot of darts. Just distraction darts, but still. Darts and their distraction with Glaives coming in for the actual damage. Nicely done, actually. Getting rid of a lot of scalpels. And the Glaives are going down, but half the Scalpels have died as well. The Sponge pushing back the Scalpels, reclaiming the territory that he had beforehand. Pushing them right back into Aquanim's base. Dying in the process, but still pushing them back into Aquanim's base. Now, the Sponge just needs to secure this area. If he secures the area, he will then have more map control. And the advantage will once again go to Anakin and the Sponge. And Anakin at the same time, the east side of the map is having to deal with a lot more scalpels. The Reapers are up, which are... They're doing a decent job, but... Wow, how many... How many Ravens does Google Frog have? I've got ten or so. They're just very clumped up. And cutting through each other, they're so clumped up. I think getting Zed fighting artifacts, I think, because they're so clumped up. But not anymore. Two or three have... I think four have gone down now to Hawks. Very nearly five. There are some... There's some static anti-gear getting in the way, but not much. One of the Hawks goes down to the Swiss, but the other Hawks will be able to take out the Swiss. Although it looks like... What the heck is Anarchid doing? Where are these guys going? No, he's retreating them home. I guess getting the Swiss over to the Static Anti-Air to kill them. Still, that is... Oh, well. Okay, the attack from the west side coming back in. Aquanim reasserting his presence in the west. But the Sponge... Having pushed the back, he still actually has a pretty good army to deal with. He has the largest army in the game. Of any of the players, Aquanim is close. The Sponge has the largest army. He's going to make it easier to speed. 13,000. 13,000 medal worth of forces. The next highest is tied between Aquanim and Anarchid. So a lot of that is heavy units for Anarchid. For Aquanim, it's also a lot of heavy units. A lot of Reapers. A lot of Scalpels. But even then, it's... There's a lot of forces coming in, and the Sponge has all of them. And Sponge has a lot of lightweight forces, that's the thing. Sponge doesn't have a lot, doesn't just have a large army. He's got, like, a lot of just individual units. So against the Scalpels, if it's not too clumped up, just waste their shots. That's a good counter. And also against the Ravens, too, it wastes their shots as well. Although, if Phoenix has come up, that's going to be a completely different story. If Phoenix has come up, then we're going to see it just dies. So yeah, Scalpel Death Ball has been kind of pushed back. And the Sponge can move out whenever he pleases with all these forces. Whenever he wants. He's just pushing out. He's at 16,000 metal worth of army now. Well, Anarchid, not quite so much. I mean, Anarchid is attacking at the same time, so it's no surprise. And he's attacking from the south side of the map. I think this is going to be it. I think Anarchid and the Sponge are going to win. This is a matter of getting through these daggers, though. The Reaper's are going to have a tricky time doing that. They can't. They have no splash damage. And they're not very accurate to begin with. However, it looks like... Well, yeah, the main main thing that Anarchid and Google Frog have is static defense. Or Aquanim and Google Frog have a static defense. Anarchid has a decent amount, but he has a lot more units. Actually, Anarchid has more static defense by metal than Aquanim does. I think part of that is this Razor, though. It's more concentrated static defense. And it looks like Anarchid did manage, to, did get pushed back. Didn't manage to do much, unfortunately. With these Reapers. One of them actually getting stuck on wreckage, unfortunately. For that Reaper. At the same time, though, the Sponge... 
He can just attack whenever he wants. He probably will. In fact, he actually has... He's got a few ravens from Google Frog. Some fine donations. So Google Frog getting more ravens of his own. Still has about eight ravens. That's a commander death. That's a... Well, not a reaper death. You have ten for a reaper death. No, you need to have... Actually, eight would be a reaper death. That's right, yeah. Eight would be, in fact, a reaper death. That'd be 6400 damage. Oh, never mind. Seven's a reaper... Sorry. Nine is a reaper death. But this is a damage reaper. Oh, nice use of that phoenix, though. Got rid of a lot of the cloaky death ball, but not quite enough. And enough of hamps just to rip apart everything else. So at the same time, we have southwest side. Bunch of Ravager death ball coming in. Ravager scorcher death ball coming in. Take the west side. Well, Glaive death ball coming in. Just rip apart the center. And I think this is game. The sponge just bum rushing. Google Frog and Aquadim with everything. Ripping them apart. And I think that is game. I don't think there's anything really to say about that. Air Factory about to go down. Upper Factory not even going down. Flails are being built, but it's too late. Fusion Plant gonna go on from the smoke. Actually, how much energy do they have before everything blows up? The sponge has oh, somewhere in the hundreds. 161. And at this point now, only one Fusion Plant left. And fall over the Reapers after most of the forces were destroyed by the Cloakies. Hover factory went down. Air factory went down. The fusion plants are going down. Another fusion plant goes down. That one for Aquanim. Google Frog's fusion plant is still up. But that is... That was a very powerful attack. And here comes round two. Sponge just gonna... Just flooding with everything. It's gonna tank through all these defenders. Rip them apart. And get rid of that presence on the map. I mean, at least... Just make it less obvious, or make it more obvious that Google Frog and Aquanim have lost this game, and actually with that they pretty much lost the series. They're going to be playing for bronze against whoever loses between Scotty Black Duchy and Cubay and and, sorry yeah, Scotty Black Duchy versus Cubay and it, Eternal Nubia, Eternal Rookie that's what it is so yeah, that's going to be it, and then Anarchid and the Sponge will be playing against the winner of the other match in the semifinals. Unless something radically changes in the next few minutes. Looks like this is game. Just economic advantage for Anarchid and the Sponge is huge. The military advantage is huge. Anarchid not quite taking as much of an advantage of it as the Sponge is. Actually, Anarchid looks like he reclaimed his heavy tank factory, proxied it. And now he's got his caretakers up. Surprisingly, these two are not assisting. I don't know why they aren't assisting. They should be. I think Anarchid means to have them do that, but isn't. If they do that, it will really seal it. But even then, it's just a matter of attacking right now. The sponge going along the west side of the map, tearing apart these last few metal extractors, tagging along basically an undefended flank, and admittedly, all the stack defenses are gone, and the main mobile defenses, the main units, are up front, taking a lot of damage from Rocco's. Glaives going along the west side of the map, about to take out the heavy tank factory. And I think when that's gone, and that factory's gone, then they're going to surrender. I mean, Aquanim's already GG. Yeah, they're they're already out. They've surrendered. That is game. That is match. Yep, that is it. So well done to Anarchid and the Sponge. Or once Anarchid leaves, then the count will be correct. Yeah, well done, Anarchid and the Sponge. So they will be moving on to the finals. Finals, finals, finals. And then bronze match is going to be... Although it's not listed for some reason. Bronze match is going to be Google Frog and Aquaman. Not sure about the other match though, because that is going to be played right now. What's the next match? <sighs> anyway, we'll be back with that in just a moment. Yeah, with that. Although once the practice get updated, so yeah. Google Frog and Aquanim going to the bronze match. Anarchy and the Sponge going to the finals. Now we have Skazi and Black Duchy versus Cubay and Eternal Rookie. That'll be coming up next. Stay tuned for that. That'll be up in just a moment. <laughs> 